This single line of code caused a huge uproar when Next.js was announcing version 14 because everyone thought that this SQL library was causing SQL injection problems and was a huge liability. But that's just because they didn't understand how template literals actually work. And in this video, I want to explain why this code is actually incredibly safe and the magic that's happening behind the scenes. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And here's a simplified version of that code we were talking about. And a lot of people had problem with this because they assumed that this was just normal string concatenation. So if the ID was something like this instead, you can see that now we're running SQL code that's going to drop the entire user table. And this is called SQL injection and it's something you definitely want to avoid. And this is why you don't want to generally do just normal string concatenation when you write SQL queries. But what people don't realize is this isn't just normal string concatenation. Instead, we're using a fancy function version of tag template literals. Now, I have an entire blog article going in depth over this topic, but in this video, I really want to cover kind of what this is and how it works. If you've seen, for example, styled components before, you may be used to writing code like this, where you have, you know, a div, and then you follow it up by writing your CSS, like padding to pixels. And then you may come down here and say like margin is going to be three pixels. And then you also may know that you can actually use a function inside of here. So for example, instead of my margin being three pixels, I can instead use a function here with my string interpolation. And this function is going to get my props and I can say like props.margin. Now you may be wondering if this is just using normal string concatenation, how exactly would this work? But it's not using just normal string concatenation. Instead, it's calling a function labeled div that works in a very particular way. So I'm gonna show you how this would work with this SQL function, for example. So we can come in here and we can create a function called SQL. And the SQL function is going to take in two or more parameters. The very first parameter is going to be all of the strings. So we're just gonna call that strings. And the second parameter or the second plus parameters are going to be all the different things you're interpolating. So in our case, it's going to be our ID. So now what we can do is we can console log this information just to see what this looks like. So we're gonna have strings and we're going to have our ID. Now, if I save this, you'll notice on the right hand side of my screen, we get this string right here is our second value. This is our ID. And then the first value, we get an array with two different things in it. The first is going to be all the stuff that comes before my string interpolation. And the second value in the array is everything that comes after the string interpolation. And if I were to, for example, have other text, inside of here, and then another thing of string interpolation, let's just say two plus two, and let's just add even more text after that. Now, if I give it a say, you can see inside of here, I have an array that has three different values inside of it to get all the text between all these different elements. So essentially each value in my array is just going to be all the elements before a particular value, and then it's gonna be the stuff after that value, after that value, and so on. And then our ID here is just our very first ID, but if we wanted to, for example, get our second value, this is going to be a number, I'll log this out as well. Now, if we get a save, you can see we're getting that number four right here. So generally, when you're writing these different types of functions, you're just going to get all of the different values inside of a rest parameter like this. So now if I print out my values, you can see that that's just going to give me everything that I pass in for string interpolation. So we get this string as well as this number four. The reason this is really important, though, is because I can actually do whatever I want with these values inside of here. So whatever I return from the SQL function is what gets returned up here. So if I just say const a is equal to this, and I do a quick console.log of A, and inside of here, instead of actually doing anything, I'm just gonna return the text high. Now you can see that this A value being logged is just high. So whatever I return from the SQL function is what is going to get the return from actually calling this string interpolation in this fancy way. Now the really nice thing is what I can do is I can actually take these values, for example, our ID, and I can wrap it so it's going to be sanitized when it's sent over to my database. So a really easy way to do this is to just take all the values, I want to map over each one of my values. So I'm going to have a value inside of here. And actually, instead of mapping, I'm going to do a quick reduce. And inside this reduce, really all I want to do is I want to combine together my string and my value. I'm actually going to copy over the code to do this, so I don't have to manually write this out. We'll zoom this out a little bit so it's easier to see. But as you can see here, we're taking all of our values, we're reducing them down. We have our final version of our string, our current value, as well as the index for our current value. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the string I currently have, and I'm adding on these values. In this case, I'm doing like a bolding, but if I wanted, I could just wrap this inside of like quotes. So I can come in here, wrap this inside quotes if I wanted to do some type of like quotation sanitization. And now this is going to give me essentially this string, but all my specific values are gonna be wrapped in quotes. So you can see over here, select star from users where, and you can see that the entire first string I pass it is wrapped in quotes, and this number four is wrapped inside of quotes. So they are being sanitized. 
And then I can go a step further, and instead of just returning this string, I could actually call out to my specific database if I wanted to. So since I don't want to actually set up a database connection or anything, let's actually change this code to be something entirely different. I'm going to paste down a brand new function. This one's called query all. And all this does is you're going to pass it whatever you want, and it's going to do a query selector on that exact thing. So I can come in here and I could say I want to query all. And let's just say I'm going to pass in the value of div. And now when I run this, it's going to try to get all the different divs on my page. So we can just say const a equals that. And then we can console.log out a. So now if I just go to my index page, and let's just add some divs inside of here. So I'm going to say div 1, 2, and 3. And this one I'll make a span. So we should only see that we're getting values 1 and 2 being returned from us. And if we look over here, you can see we have two divs inside of here. And if we were to actually look at the text value inside of them, we should see that these are one and two. So it's only getting the specific div values for us. And this again works just fine. If I were to do string interpolation inside of here and I wanted to pass in the value V like that, you can see it's still getting me both of those different divs. So this is kind of how that fancy string interpolation is working. It's taking those different values from that SQL, it's wrapping them inside of quotes or whatever it needs to do to sanitize them. Then it's calling the database and it's returning those database values from it. So it's just kind of a fancy way of calling a function, but calling it specifically with a string and doing fancy stuff with the values that are being passed in. Now, if this video interests you and you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend checking out my blog article on the topic. I'll link it in the description and the comments below.